Um, let's pray and then we, we start. And we're going to be talking today about Jehovah Jireh, which is God, our provider. That's what we're going to be talking about. So let's pray and then we move right into the word and hopefully it will be a good, um, you know, a good word for your spirit, for your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for your blessings. Thank you that you are our provider, O oh God. And we celebrate you today. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Hey, guys, uh, before we get into the Word, I just want to, uh, you know, as you know, we are flooded by uh, the media. And uh, when you uh, look at Fox News or uh, you know, or in in U.S. or CNN or you know here, uh, you know the the networks that we have that we uh, watch here, uh, you know, is so easily to be discouraged because media is mainly focusing on the death and focusing on how many cases of coronavirus are there, and um, you know, and last weekend we were talking about fear, and this has all to do with provision, okay. Um, but uh, we were talking last weekend about, you know, address fear, but it's hard to sometimes to address fear uh, after, you know, being exposed to so much news of death and so much news of how many people got affected and the numbers are going up and all these kinds of things. And, and, and I tell you, it is very hard. And I, you know, you know, I have been saying we needed to battle that spirit. We cannot allow that spirit of fear to set in. But I will going to give you uh, the what the media most the time don't give you. I mean, you know, for those of you that are in Brazil, they're showing, you know, those mass graves and, you know, the, putting a bunch of people there and stuff. But, uh, you know, because, you know, bad news sell it. You know, guys, let never forget that. Bad news always sell it, you know, and so... Uh, we needed to uh, come against that stuff because um, we don't want to be exposed to bad news. You know, in, in Canada, this is about, this is the status at 340, okay? So 340, Air Canada, uh, um, in Canada, we had 39,813 uh, cases of coronavirus. We had, and that is so sad to mention, 1,966 people died, Okay. But here's the number that people don't maximize and show. 13,647 of those cases are recovered. 13,647. And I tell you a big shout out to all the uh, our frontline workers, our healthcare uh, workers that are giving and exposing themselves to this. I, I saw an email today or somebody sent me an email today uh, about how well they were uh, taking care of when they went to our own hospital over here and how the doctors and the nurses and so on. And, um, you know, guys, that's not a small number for us to just, well, you know, 13,647. Now, let me give you Ontario. This is Canada, okay? So all the province of Ontario. Let me give you, uh, in Canada, let me give you Ontario right now. Total number of cases, 12,245. Resolved cases, 6,221, which is 659 death. But watch this, guys. We have in the whole Ontario right now, 878 people hospitalized, 243 people on ICU. This is the whole Ontario, folks. Whole Ontario. 243 cases in ICU. And... 192 cases in ICU on a ventilator, okay? 192. Now, let me give you our region. When I talk about the Durham region, this is as, as of 3.45 today. Durham region, okay? The whole region here of Durham. We have 756 cases of uh, COVID-19 in the Durham region, okay? We have a total case in home isolation, 381. Uh, total case resolved, 276, 276 of total case resolved, 381 people at home. We have in hospitals, 
25 people are hospitalized as of 345, that's the status. 25 people hospitalized and nine people in a whole whole Durham region, nine people in ICU. Total case uh, disease 74 and uh, in, in residence alone, just in residence, total deceased in residence or uh, in, in, in houses are 61. Why am I saying those numbers, folks? Because they don't, are not maximizing on the numbers and the great job that the front care workers are doing, in a sense. They tell you how many people are dying and, and, and that draws people fears. And uh, I don't blame for people to be scared. You know, if, if everybody's talking about death and how many cases are and how many more and more, but nobody's talking about how many people are being taken care of and how many people have overcome that. And if I tell you the age of the two people that die in the hospital here, one between the age of 20 and 29, another one between the age of 6 and 69. I mean, folks, you know, it's a real disease. We we had to be concerned. Gotta gotta watch out for all of those, you know, the the hand washing and social distance, all that. But let me tell you, folks, you gotta be able to celebrate what you know. Can you imagine if it wasn't for the hand of the Lord, what this thing could have been? And not only not only here, all over the world. And um and, and the reason why I'm saying that today, particularly for you, is for, there are two reasons for that. Number one is. I think we needed to be looking and celebrating what God is doing. I think we need to be looking and celebrating what some of those amazing professional workers are doing and taking good care. And that's that email that I received today of amazing care that someone, uh, uh, um, amazing care that someone, you know, had a, a suspicion of coronavirus was was admitted to Lake Ridge Hospital and the doctors and the nurses there to, took such a good care of that person. It's just amazing. And we got to be able to talk about that. We got to be able to talk that, you know, there is 90 people in ICU in our hospitals here. And there are two hospitals that are accepting uh, COVID, that are fit for COVID. You know, nine people in ICU, 25 people in hospitalized. And, and so when you look about the all the numbers, you think, man, everybody's getting. No, that's not the case, folks. That does not diminish the fact that we needed to continue to be cared. But God is providing. Our God is a God that provides. Can you say amen to that? See, and he's providing, you know, the, the proper, you know, care, personal. And I am so grateful for the merciful hand of God over there. He is our Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. But let's, let's talk and pray and praise God for the good things that he has done. Amen. Let's not just keep on the bad news. Let's not keep on, you know, what's not happening and how many deaths and how horrible this thing is. And it is horrible. It is horrible. And our, our own community, our own church, you know, we have two deaths in our community. So, man, this is hard, not related to this. I mean, Dawn, of course, was related to this. But, uh, you know, again, it's like we have to see and we have to celebrate, we have to pay attention to what also the good things that God is doing. That's why the Bible says that whatever is, in, is, is, is noble, whatever is truth, whatever is trustworthy, whatever is of good, think on those things. And I want to challenge you to shift gears and begin to think about the good things that the Lord is doing. He is a good provider. But now, let me tell you why, the second reason why I told you this. You know, um, Jehovah Jireh, and, and of course that word uh, shows up in Genesis chapter 22, verse 2. And you know the story is when uh, Abraham was sacrificing Isaac. Here, let me read the scripture to you. Genesis 22, verse 2. Take Isaac, your only son, this is God speaking to him, whom you love, and sacrifice him on the mountain, I will show you. So here's the picture of Abraham taking Isaac and servants, and, and God saying, go and sac give him as a sacrifice to me. So they go to the mountain, and on the bottom of the mountain, Abraham says something that is amazing to me. He says, we are going upstairs, up there, up in the mountains. We're going to do the sacrifice. And you guys stay here. The boy and I are going there and we will be back. So right down the mountain, he already knew that God somehow was going to provide. God somehow was going. He wasn't diminishing the fact that it would be hard probably going to make that trip up there. But he already knew that God was going to provide, to provide for him. Just like folks, we need to stand and believe that God's going to provide a way for us to come out of this uh, 
COVID-19 that we are going in. And I'm talking about our particular region here now, for people that have lost their jobs, for people that have been challenged on their, fi their finances or, or whatever, that God is going to provide a way. Now, the word sacrifice in Hebrew means this, a whole or a burnt offering. So we are going to do a burnt offering to the Lord. See, the scriptures don't tell many details about the private thoughts that Abraham or Isaac had uh, in this story. We don't know what's going on in their minds. But in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 19, give us a little bit to a, a window of what Abraham could be thinking when he uh, went and did the sacrifice. You see, when God told Abraham uh, that, that, you know, to go and sacrifice, see, what Abraham would know, and if you read Hebrews eleven nineteen, he knew the character of God. He had to walk with God long enough that he knew that God, through his power, would and he, that trust that he had in God, that God would get him out of that situation, that God would provide somewhere because Isaac was the son of the promise to Abraham. So uh, how could God promise and then take it away, and particularly for the promise that he would become the father of many nations? Well, through whose seed that would be? Well, of course, that would be through the seed of Isaac. Now, he knew, going up already, he knew, that God was going to somehow, if the sacrifice would have to be made, complete sacrifice and burning and everything, he knew that God was going to provide a way that, you know, that would revert the situation or whatever. So he knew, so Abraham, as difficult as it was, he went up on that mountain and imagine that. Let's paint the picture a little bit. He goes up in the mountain. He takes the, his son. He builds an altar. Now, the altar is not built up there. He builds the altar. He takes the boy, puts the boy into the altar, tie him up, as the Bible says. He secures the boy in there. And, and then, you know, of course, that famous Lord, you know, dead. We have all the... All the, the, the you know, the fire is here, everything is here, but where is the ham? Where is the sacrifice? Now, folks, stop with me here just for a second. One thing is for Abraham, who has already been walking with God for a season, knowing that God was going to come through. But imagine Isaac. What is going on in the mind of Isaac? going through all that. I mean, people, you know, there's a lot of sermons and people talk about, you know, about, uh, you know, Abraham's faith. and But, uh, but I want to just talk a little bit about Isaac's faith. Because, you know, listen, he's a young man. Put yourself in that situation. You and your father. Your dad says, okay, we're going to go to sacrifice. And then he builds an altar and you're there hanging around your dad. He builds an altar, put it in. And then he takes you and gets a, a little, a rope and put you on that altar. Now, think with me. You know, because on that tradition, you know that a sacrifice was going to be made. He already had spoken. The, the, everything was prepared. But do you, would you allow your dad to put you on the fire? I don't think so. I think as a young man, you would just get out of there as quick as you possibly could. You fight your dad and go down that mountain. There is no tomorrow. I mean, you old man, catch me if you can kind of deal. But that's not what happened. Imagine that boy, he stay there, allow his father to put him on that rope. He stay there and trust, listen to me, trust his father's faith. The stories that probably his dad told him about God that he should trust. All the things that happened prior to that moment. Man, that's an incredible faith to me that Isaac had to just stay there. Imagine about him, you know, that... He would allow that to be the case. Now, watch this. Jehovah Jireh simply means God will provide. That's what it means. That's, uh, the, but the, the Hebrew word also is not only, you know, God will provide, but the Hebrew also is, that word is see to it. Or it's, it's, it's uh, if, if you go similar to the name of a woman named Hagar, in Genesis chapter 16, verse 13, when, when, when the name was given to her was the God who sees. So that word provide, that God will provide Jehovah Jireh, also means see to it. Another word related to that is a Hebrew word also means to perceive or to experience. So Abraham calls God Jehovah Jireh. 
he isn't just saying to God, God gives, you know, God's going to give my goods or whatever it is that I need. He's saying you personally see to it, experience you all of this that you have promised me. I trust completely that you're going to see to it that every particular need that I have, you are going to take care of it. Not only provide for that moment. When Abraham says, you know, Jehovah Jireh, God provided, he's not talking about a moment. He's talking about a lifetime of provision. He's talking about the, 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 the particular need. He, God was going to see to it that whatever it is that was needed, he was going to provide. What was needed back then for Abraham, of course, was a sacrifice. Did God provide the sacrifice? Absolutely, he did. Now, he is... That word, what that word implies, that is the need of every day, your every day need. And you might be saying, wow, do I need a provision for finances every day? Yeah. Do you need, do you need provision for peace every day? Yeah. Do you need uh, emotional provision? Yeah. Yeah. See, that provision, which you associate a lot of with finances, but that provision is for every single thing that is needed. And so, what is our first need that mankind has? What is that? Salvation. The, 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 we need a provision for eternity. Did God provide for eternity for you and I? Yes, he did. What was the sacrifice? The Lamb of God. Jesus was the Lamb of God that was that God provided for mankind so we don't have to live in need. Folks, listen, this is the good news of that you and I have, particularly during this coronavirus season, that God has provided a way, a sacrifice, the precious Lamb of God, to provide for the most important need of mankind. What is it? Salvation. What is it? Eternity. Because, folks, listen to me. Everything else... else is secondary. You can have money and finances, but if you don't have salvation, you're doomed. You're done. You can have all the all the, the stuff that we need for us to live on this thing. But if you don't have salvation, we are in trouble. But God has provided for us, for you and I. And then of course is the other need, the need, the details need. And now, when I read you those statistics and, the, and all of that, folks, here's what we, I think we needed to, you know, God, we need to believe God, that God will provide everything that we need in order for this whole situation to be turned around. And if we don't begin to see and celebrate the little things that's happening to us, you are not going to have faith for God to provide, uh, you know, that he is going to take care of you in the future. You understand what I'm saying? Like we are in health right now, right now. But if I don't celebrate the fact that, you know, if I don't see that uh, there is a lot of people coming out of this coronavirus thing and saying, God, you have provided a way for that. If I don't begin to see, I will not have enough faith in case I need to go through something like that. Now, hey, Chris and I can sit with you here and many other people, many of you guys can sit and see how God has provided your financial needs. And boy, God has provided for our financial needs in a tremendous way. I have confidence that God's going to provide my needs today and tomorrow. Why? Because of what he has done for me in the past. But if I don't celebrate those things that God has done for me in the past, I don't have enough faith to believe that my Jehovah Jireh is going to provide for me for today. And we have to make sure that we, uh, that we keep our faith active and looking for those good news. God, thank you. Every day you need to go to some of those reports and say, God, thank you that it's only nine on ICU right now. Thank you that you're providing the way of healing and you're providing the way that you're, this thing is being held back. Oh God, I believe, folks, that believers and Christians are making a tremendous difference in this, in, during this time. Now, why? There were so many deaths, folks, and there was. One is way too many. Can you say amen to that? I don't have the answer for that. I really don't have the answer for that. But I tell you what, I am not going to look into the negative 
And hopefully, I'll have the faith to overcome when I need it. No way. I'm going to be looking. I'm going to look at the status. I'm going to look at what's going on. But my focus is going to be, God, you are God that's still active. You are still moving. You are still working, oh God. Lord, I know that um, there are many, many people that are at home right now that have been affected, infected by this coronavirus. But I thank you, Lord. You brought, you brought that those numbers, how much, how many was it? Let me see here. You brought 276 cases out of 756, Lord. I know that you can bring those 381 as well that is still at home, is still uh, taken care of. This is just for our province over here. See, I'm going to focus on those. I'm going to focus on the God that provides a way for people to, uh, you know, to receive that you know, certainty. And in my heart, I'm going to pray and believe God. God, you're going to be good today. You're going to provide a way for people to come out of that. You're going to provide a way that those messages, that Sunday messages that all churches all over the place are doing, they're going to, this is a time of harvest. I'm going to thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh that provides for people to find cure, per se, for the most important disease and most important uh, need that many men have, which is the need of salvation. Can you say amen to that? Come on. You see, years in the future, and Isaac was approaching, you know, 40 years. He was meditating or he was praying. I made a note here in a field when, when his wife, Rebecca, came to him. And the Lord filled Isaac's heart with love for that young woman who would become his wife. And the two became part of the lineage of Christ. Remember, if you trace the genealogy of Abraham and Isaac, you're going to find right through. It's like, how did that come? To, through God's provision. It came through God's provision. See, we got to be able, folks, to celebrate. See, there is a harvest that's coming after this whole thing. There are people that are going to come after this whole you know, thing goes away. But boy, it's not going to come. Or if I don't begin to speak that, if I don't begin to stand on that, believing that God, you have a plan, you have a purpose, you're going to provide a way for healing. You're going to provide a way for cure. You're going to provide a way for salvation for these people. You're going to provide a way for my job. You're going to provide a way. I don't know how, but Lord, you're going to provide a way for if that job doesn't work out, there'll be another job. I believe that God's going to open supernatural doors, folks, in the days to come. Would you believe that? Would you believe that Jehovah Jireh is your God and he's able to provide for your need, not only eternal need, but also the, the detail of your, the needs that you have. Every single thing. Do you need peace today? He's a Jehovah Jireh that provides peace. Do you need a, a job? Do you need finances? What is it that you need? God is able to provide for you. But I tell you, that faith is not going to come focusing on bad news. That faith is going to come as, as meditating on God's word. Meditating on what God's going to do. You know one thing that is interesting as you read Genesis chapter 22? If you go for the next, next chapter and the, the ones after that, it's going to old genealogy. It's almost like, you're kidding me? You tell me a great story like this and then goes for what you and I, you know, I mean, I don't know if you do, but I do many times when I read genealogy, this beget, that one and that. I go like, oh, brother, why even we have that? But I tell you what's amazing. What's amazing is this in the word of God that it was the provision of a son of Isaac, the despairing of his life, that, that God provided to Abraham, that he would become the fathers of the many nations. In the very the next chapter, if you be, continue to read there, there is a bunch of people that come, that begin to be counting. And if you keep on that genealogy there, keep going, going, going up to Jesus, you're going to find our Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, as part of that, God providing a way for eternity for you and I, through that promise that God made to Abraham. Isn't that amazing? I think it is. Anyways, that was the word for today, folks. And uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're keeping safe. I hope you're keeping your faith up. I hope that you're following all the guidelines that need to be followed there. Let's not be, you know, foolish, folks. Let's continue to do that. But let's just celebrate good numbers. Amen. Let's just call on the Lord. Let's pray for families that are losing you know, their friends and, 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 and family members and so on. Boy, that's a tragic thing. Continue to pray for Jenny. Let's continue to pray for her. Let's call in the name of the Lord for, for her. Uh, continue to pray for the Mansika family. What a beautiful family that is. And, um, you know, and, and I tell you, going through what they're going through, they need prayer. Can you say amen to that? 
All right, tomorrow, Pastor Valdir and Alessandro are going to have a great time on Psalm 23 still. Just enjoying that. And uh, don't miss uh, that one there. And, uh, and then on Sunday, actually, Pastor Phil will have the Friday um, also chat on the, for youth. And then on Sunday, we are going to be together again for church. Amen. Make sure that you send those, particularly the Sunday videos, and use those tools, folks. I mean, those kids are doing a great job, you know. Uh, Gabi, JV, and, uh, you know, Daisy was involved this past week, and we're trying to bring a lot of people for the community there to be involved. And uh, those are great tools for evangelism. Amen. Just pass those things on. Family members. We have a family member that is watching that. It's just awesome. Uh, you know, the way uh, we are, are seeing that happening and, you know, people are much more families. This is a tool for families to be exposed to the gospel. All right. Well, folks, we love you. Can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you back in the house of God, in the church. And uh, so we can uh, worship together. Amen. God bless you guys and uh, have a great uh, evening. And I'll see you tomorrow night again. Let us pray. Father. Thank you that you are a God that provides for all of our needs. Every detail of your needs. You see to it, Lord. You see to it. Whatever it is that your people need, you are the God that provides for that need. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above them when we ask for them. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our region. Thank you for sparing lives. And Lord, we claim every single life for God. Those people that are in ICU right now, those nine ones that are in ICU right now, Lord, we pray for them. We pray, Lord, for those who are in the hospital do this COVID-19, Father. We pray for healing, Lord, on their behalf. Those, O oh Lord, who are on the uh, different homes, O oh Lord, and we ask, O oh Lord, they are uh, just, uh, they, got, they got the, uh, you know, they are, they have the virus there, but they are, they're handling at home. We pray for your provision for them, O oh God. We pray, Lord, that you'd spare their family members, O oh Lord, friends, O oh God. We pray, Lord, for a release of that. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that provides for our needs. And this is a need that we have. So we're going to see to it, O oh God, that the needs of your people are going to be provided for. So we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you guys. And uh, say hello to everybody in your family. And we'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you.